Again, thank you for those who have joined us. We're going to go ahead and start in about two minutes here just to give everyone, everyone enough time to join. Okay, I think we're all ready to start. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, we are here tonight to discuss the um, traffic coming plan for Aubrey Patent uh, Drive and Newton Patent Drive. Uh, my name is Nicole Matakwe. I am a planner with the Fairfax County Department of Transportation. Tonight, we also have Michael Coyle, who um, is with the Sully District's office. And we have also jo Joel as well with the um, Fairfax County Department of Transportation. Um, so um, I will go ahead and start with a short presentation. Um, once after the presentation, we'll have time for questions and answers. Um, if any of the members of the task force are joining us tonight, uh, they can make their presence known at that time. Okay, I'll go ahead and present this or start presenting. Okay, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, as I once said before, we are here to discuss the traffic calming process for Aubrey Patton Drive and Newton Patton Drive. Um, so first, uh, I will go over a couple items before begin, I begin. Uh, please note that the session is being recorded or and may be shared on social media. Please hold all questions until the end of the presentation and instructions for how to ask the questions will be provided after the presentation. Uh, today, we are here to explain the traffic calming process, um, uh, provide an opportunity for the community um, and answer any questions you all may have. So uh, let's begin uh, with what traffic calming is. Traffic calming is the installation of physical devices to reduce vehicle speed. These devices can be either vertical or horizontal. Horizontal devices are driven over, such as a speed hump showing on the top left, while uh, you drive around horizontal devices, such as raised median island to the right. Both types of devices make the road safer for both drivers and pedestrians. I do also want to know um, note um, that this process we can through this process we cannot permit um, to install stop signs. Here we have charts and images showing the effects of decreased speed. As speed decreases, visual acuity, field of vision, and depth perception increase. Also, uh, with reduced speed, we can come to significant reduction uh, in the number of severity of crashes involving motor, motor vehicles. So if you look at this slide here, we have the map of traffic calming projects throughout the county. There are over 200 projects resulting in almost 500 devices countywide. Every district has devices, and chances that you have driven over one is pretty high. Sorry. Uh, the upcoming program can be broken up into five steps. Step one is project initiation. Step two, plan development. 
Step three, community engagement. Step four, ballot phase. Step five, which is the final step, project installation. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, all traffic calming projects are always community initiated. So, the process begins with a request from the community to the supervisor's office. Once the request is see, received, we will complete a basic eligibility review. Um, next, we will conduct a traffic study. And once it passes both the eligibility and traffic study, uh, the community will then form a task force. There are eligibility requirements that need to be met, and they are uh, road must be VDOT maintained road, have a 25 mile hour speed limit, be functionally classified as local collector or arterial, and if it's collector or arterial, it needs to be a residential street. Uh, there is a traffic study uh, component. Here we have a traffic study um, results for Aubrey Patton Drive and the volume criteria um, we need um, to be between 500 to 6,000 vehicles in 24 hours, both directions combined. Um, for this project, we had 2,519, so we met the volume criteria. And um, for the speed criteria, the 85th percentile of speed needs to be greater than or equal to 35 miles per hour. This means that 15% of vehicles need to be traveling at 35 miles or faster in at least one direction of travel. Um, so this is a study for Aubrey Patton Drive and for the speeds, um, 85th percentile, we found uh, was 35 on the northbound lane and 34 on the southbound lane, which means it met the speed criteria as well. And here we have for Newton Patton Drive, um, we did the same traffic study. Um, so for the volume criteria, or for the volume, total volume, we had 4,190, so we met the volume criteria. And for the 85th um, percentile, um, we found 44 in the eastbound lane and 38 on the westbound lane. So we met the speed criteria as well. So uh, plan development is the second step. First, we will conduct a site visit in the field in order to develop a draft plan. Um, once we have a draft plan, we will meet with the task force to get feedback and then amend the plan if necessary. Once the task force is satisfied with the draft plan, homeowners directly adjacent to any proposed measure will need to sign off um, the placement of the device in order for the, the project or the next step to move forward. Here we have device placement requirements based on a guideline we need um, a minimum of 300 feet between measures and from existing stopping conditions. We need a minimum of 150 feet from an intersection. We need uh, a minimum of 150 feet for adequate sight distance with any device and it needs to fit on the existing roadway. So we have to take into account any driveways, manholes, um, any utilities and also account for the grade of the road. So based on those requirements, we were able to draft a plan and proposed three, oh, I'm sorry, proposed seven speed humps. Uh, we have three on Aubrey Patton Drive and four on Newton Patton Drive and their speed tables. My correction is they're going to be speed tables. Here we have a graphic of um, a speed hump, um, which um, is going to be 12 feet long and three inches in center. Um, for these um, proposed devices, we have the speed table, which is going to be longer than the speed hump. We're going to have 22 feet long and three inches at center. So here's a graphic um, showing a speed table. And as I said before, it's 22 feet long 
first is the 12 feet of a long of a speed hump and three inches in center. And in addition to that, um, there will be a speed hump sign or a speed table sign or speed hump sign um, and the recommended 15 miles per hour sign on each side. Uh, there will also be white chevrons in each travel lane. Step three um, is community meeting, which is where we are here today. Uh, this is where we present the plan to the community to obtain feedback. And based off of the feedback, um, the task force will decide whether to amend the plan or proceed to the next phase. If the task force decides to move forward, we can uh, or we can move forward to ballot phase. Each household in the ballot phase or in the ballot area, I'm sorry, will receive one vote. It will need to um, it will need to send it directly to the district supervisor's office. The ballot period will be open for a minimum of three weeks and the supervisor's office will tally and uh, tally the votes and notify the task force of the results. Here we have an example of the ballot. Uh, the proposed devices will be listed on the ballot and the community will be uh, voting for the entire plan. The task force is responsible for distributing the, uh, the valid ballot packages uh, to everyone in the ballot area. Each household in the ballot area will receive one vote. Um, it will need to uh, send it, I'm sorry, um, send, send it to the directly to the supervisor's office, but there are several steps that can happen and how you can send in your vote. Um, one, is you can mail in your ballot. Two is hand deliver to the supervisor's office or three email um, to the supervisor's office. Also note that ballots should not be returned to the task force. Um, here we have a, a ballot area map of Aubrey Patton Drive and New Patton Drive. Uh, so there is a total of 1,100 ballots. And in order for the proposed plan to move forward, we will need greater than 50% um, of all house households to vote in favor. And so we will need um, 551 yes votes for this plan to move forward. If we get the required number of yes votes, we can move forward to step five, uh, project installation, which is the final step. Um, so traffic calming um, plan will be presented to the uh, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors for endorsement. And then that resolution will be sent to VDOT. Um, SCDOT will work um, with the Department of Public Works and Environmental Services uh, to schedule installation. And finally, the traffic measures on the plan will be installed. So here is the end of the presentation. Um, and here we have the instructions on how to um, answer your questions, raise your hands. So we are going to move to the question and answer phase. You um, have two options, um, chat or speak. Once the chat item is active on Teams, you can use it to type um, to type your question, type in your question. And if you want to speak, um, you can play, uh, click on the raised hand icon um, that you'll, then you'll be unmuted um, once it's your turn. If you are on the phone, please push star five to raise your hand when it is your turn, the host will call upon you to ask your question. You need to push star six to unmute. And after you are finished, please push star five to unraise your hand. Okay, and with that further, we'll go ahead and move on to the questions and answers. And Joelle, if we have anybody coming in. Sure, uh, looks like uh, Elizabeth has one. Good evening. Uh, is there any plan for installing crosswalks on Aubrey? Patent and new patent in the conjunction with the speed tables. 
Um, so with the RTAP um, program, we are not eligible to install um, sidewalks or crosswalks. Um, maybe, Mike, I'm not sure if you know of anything in the plans that might be outside of the RTAP. So, Nicole, I'm not aware of VDOT having any plans to install crosswalks or even with our, our county's transportation folks. Um, but if the if um, Ms. Atkins, if you can provide me with the intersections you're looking at that, um, you know, could use crosswalks, we can do that outreach to VDOT to ask them to review it to see if they will install a crosswalk. All right, thank you guys. Um, yeah, I see Elizabeth has her hand raised. So let me go ahead and allow, allow the mic. Hi, sorry, it was more just me making sure that I could unmute the mic. Um, oh. Would it? Uh, would you prefer like if I chat like chatted a couple of intersections because there there are a couple it, where I'm frequently seeing people crossing. Um, without and and it would be helpful especially on newton Patton and aubrey Patton. so uh, either way if, if you if you tell them to me right now i i can jot them down real quick and ask vdot you know i can reach out to them or if you want to put it in the chat or i can give you my email address and you can send me an email whichever way is most convenient for you we can do that okay um i mean i can just tell you now sure. um the the crosswalk across Newton Patton Drive um, and Red House Drive, that intersection. Okay. Um, especially because there's a bus stop there. So that would be uh, really helpful. And then um, basically anything across Aubrey Patton Drive, uh, kind of where the intersections of like Great Rocky Run and Triplet Drive are, but also. Um, the four shimmy drive or the salisbury plain court like anywhere in there if like one or two crosswalks could be installed that would be really excellent okay i'm sorry you said triplet and you said great rocky mm -hmm. and, and i'm sorry i missed the third one sorry uh four chimney drive Fourth. okay and then salisbury plain court so basically that that kind of whole section of aubrey Patton drive doesn't have any crosswalks at all across the street and I know a lot of people are like out walking and running and so just if, if we had like kind of a safer uh place to kind of direct the the pedestrian traffic that might be um helpful and and maybe in conjunction with the speed tables that might be helpful but the the most important one that I'm seeing is that Red House Drive and Newton Patton Drive crossing because that that one is that uh, there there isn't anything really slowing stuff down right there, and because the the bus stop is there as well. Okay. Nope. Thank you. Got it all. Thank you for taking a look at that. Thank you, Elizabeth. If you could just lower your hand for me, um, and if you do have another question, uh, lower it and then raise it again. I'd be happy to call on you again. Um. So again, folks, if you have any questions, now's the time to either write it in the chat. Um, if you're on the phone, you can press star five is that correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um to raise your hand uh okay so i have a question from keith uh he's asking about a stop sign at aubrey pat and triplet okay and um so once again um through this program we are not enabled or able to install stop signs um you would have to go through vdot um, and I would say it's quite a challenge to get a stop sign in an intersection or somewhere um, to use it for traffic calming. We don't typically use it for traffic calming because they're um, essentially made for queuing traffic at an intersection. Um, but maybe um, if uh, Mike, if you want to jot that down, maybe we can contact VDOT for that. And and I'll just I'll just chime in. You know, VDOT has changed their philosophy on on stop signs over the years. It it, it used to be more along the lines of that they would look at it for per request, and and I don't want to say that they always um, installed them, but they were a little bit more you know lenient towards that, um, and they didn't use a stringent criteria. 
now because again as nicole said they don't look at stop signs as a traffic calming measure that they're slowing the speeds of the vehicles and so now they follow um what's from um what they follow is the manual on uniform traffic control devices and and that's comes from the federal government and it's one of those that the the stop sign criteria is, is very stringent that they follow, you know, when they do a, a stop sign warrant study. So we can we can make the ask, but just wanting to to let you know that it's 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 not as easy to get a stop sign up as it once was. Thank you, Mike. All right, and then I have a question from Steve. Um, I see his ha has his hand raised. So I'll go ahead and allow his mic first. OK, Steve, you should be able to unmute yourself. We're not hearing um, anything right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll read his question from the from the chat then. Um, okay. Did I miss when the when will voting start? So we're here at the community meeting phase. Um, the next phase is to um, go to ballot. Um, that will be when that starts. That is essentially on the task force. Um, they can decide whether to move forward with the plan as is to ballot, or they can choose um, based off of feedback um, whether to amend the plan. If they do amend the plan, they will have to have another community meeting. Um, so it really depends on when that gets started. Um, it could be um, we have to have the ballot open for a minimum of three weeks, and I we try to tell the task force to at least start I would say probably four to five weeks ahead of time. So we could think about another month or two if they start now. All right, and then we have a phone number um, that has a question. So I'll go ahead and unmute it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yep, okay, we hear you now. Hello? Hello. Yep. Hi, um, I don't really have a question. I have a comment. Mm -hmm. I live on Aubrey Patton Drive, directly in front of the stop sign that is between uh, Aubrey Patton and Four Chimney Drive. Mm -hmm. I see people go flying through here. We really need these uh, speed humps or whatever you're calling them. Um, it's so dangerous, and we have a lot of little children down here, and it something has to be done. Obviously, this is a start. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. appreciate your um, input. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the comment. I'm going to disable the mic. Um, Steve, if you, still, if you still have a question, go ahead and lower your hand and then raise it again for me, just in case that might be the one from previous times. Um, we have a, a guest uh, with the question of, is there any way to add a center line and parking lines on Aubrey Patton? Um, so that would again have to go, um, the center line would have to go to VDOT. Um, that is uh, also a test of how wide the road is and how um, they feel it, how safe it is to have that kind of width of the road. Um, as far as parking striping, um, we have done that in the past, but we have not pro looked at it for this plan just because of the width of the road. Okay, uh, we have a hand raised from Jennifer. Good evening. Thank you so much um, for taking. Um, this comment, um, again, echoing the Aubrey Patton resident, um, it's just a comment, not a question, but we are on Black Horse Court um, at the intersection of Black Horse Court and Newton Patton, and it's a straightaway um, between Newton Patton, uh, between the last stop sign at, at Newton Patton and Aubrey Patton down to the end where the apartments are and people just gain so much speed either going through the stop sign without stopping 
um, or just really accelerating down to the apartments or from the apartments up to that stop sign um, at Newton Patton and Aubrey Patton. And we've seen so many accidents along the side of the road uh, with parked cars, including ours, um, that took a month to repair um, with people just going so fast and you know, echoing the, the earlier caller. We do have a lot of children at the corners and you know, including our granddaughter at our home and definitely um, want things to be safe for everyone. So thanks to the task force and Fairfax County for, for coming together and, and putting this plan together. Of course, and you're welcome. And um, just for your information, since you guys, it sounds like we are getting a lot of um, staff um, sign runners, um, you guys are welcome to also contact your local police force um, and contact them for the non-emergency number and ask for enforcement at specific areas that you're seeing a, a reoccurring problem. Um, so that at least that, that's something that you could do um, in the meantime. And, and also, if you, you like, you can always um, either call our office or you can send me an email. It's it's michael.coyle at fairfaxcounty.gov. And if you're seeing, you know, people running the stop signs, there's certain times of day, you know, and letting us know which intersection, our office can also reach out to the commander and assistant commander of the Sully District Police Station and ask them to assign it. Awesome. Um, so we have another comment from uh, Eric, and I'll, I'll go ahead and open up to comments and questions right now because we're, we're not having too many questions at the same time. So if you have any comments you'd like to share as well, please put them in the chat or uh, raise your hand and we'll take them at, the, at this time as well. Uh, so Eric's comment was just uh, agreed that section of Newton Patton is a drag strip at night. And we'll go, go ahead and give people a minute or two to write any comments or questions that they have. Okay, and um, we do have some contact information and I'll share with you right now um, just to have it up on the screen. And Mike, I did put yours there as well. Maybe not your direct email, um, um, but it, you can get in touch yes. with Mike that way. Yes, if, if anybody with the email address that Nicole has on the screen um, here right now, I also have access and see the emails that come into that box. So if somebody sends it to that one, that will get to me as well. And, you know, we can address or, you know, respond to any of the concerns or questions. Yep. And the, and the email is um, at Sully at FairfaxCounty.gov uh, for those of us who are on the phone. Yeah. Or the, the number is 703-814-7100 for the Sully District Office. Um, again, so I'll give another 60 seconds uh, if anyone has any comments or questions. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and uh, call the meeting to an end. Oh, OK, we have a question from Matt or comment. OK, Matt, you should be uh, allowed to unmute. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody that worked on the project. Uh, we live on the other end of Aubrey Patton from Newton Patton. And we have two little kids and people fly through there. I mean, they come on, they're floating over that bridge. So I think where you've decided to put the speed humps makes a lot of sense. Just want to say thanks. Well, thank you. Um, and I see Keith has a question. Um, I know it's not part of the traffic calming, but how do we know, how do we go about removing no parking zones from Newton Patton to prevent overflow parking onto Red House Drive. And so, Keith, I, I'm I'm assuming that you're talking about um, some of the, the no parking signs along Newton Patton, you know, basically between Braddock and, and, and Red House Drive, and assuming that that's what you are. I mean, some of that I know that um, VDOT had, had no parked um i know some there were some issues you know with the the shoulders there where people would park and doing some of the maintenance but again if um you know if if the hoa you know sends a specific request for a specific area that they'd like to see the no parking signs removed we can ask vdot to take a look at that 
I mean, I, I can't guarantee you what would happen because, again, they're going to look at it to some extent from both safety and maintenance. Um, but, you know, it's, it is something that if the community wants to look at that, um, we can have VDOT review it. And we have a comment from Elizabeth saying uh, thank you for working on this and presenting it to us. Uh, and then we have a comment or question from Eric. Hi guys, uh, thank you for doing this for us. I, I'm uh, I'm on the task force, and I have a question about the voting process itself. Obviously, yeah. I know the task force has to say yes, we're ready to do that, which I assume mm -hmm. we will do relatively quickly uh, once we speak with Al. Uh, that being said, um, I assume from what I heard that we need to get 50% or more of the total homes. I'm assuming not the responses, but the total homes. And if that is in fact the case, do you guys have any suggestions on how to get the vote out, uh, make sure people are responding, and what is a typical response rate uh, that you guys are seeing? Should we be concerned about people just not responding? Um, that is a good question. Um, so yes, you do need 50, more than 50%. Um, so you would need, um, as we have seen here, um, you would need 551 yes votes. Um, it is quite a large um, ballot area because it's a large neighborhood that we're working within. Um, my suggestion to the task force is to be out um, and really inform your community of, of what the process is, um, what's going on, what you're proposing. Um, we do have some task forces. Um, they will hand deliver uh, their ballots. Um, it's quite a lot of, it's a large ballot area, so I can understand. We do have some task force members um, mailing um, them out. Um, I would also just recommend just as much communication as you can get out to the community as possible. Uh, we have seen other task forces as well, kind of like towards the end of that balloting period is to maybe if you have a listserv or if you have like a next door app or if you, your community uses something, um, just to, to put a little reminder saying, oh, you know, this ends here, you know, just a little reminder. Um, now, if you do leave um, or go door to door with ballots, um, we do recommend that you leave the ballot there if the person does not answer the, the door. Um, that way we're kind of distributing evenly and so they all get their ballots around the um, same time frame. That makes sense. Quick, quick follow up. I think we have some added complexity because Heritage Crossing is not part of Newgate and we've got those communities on the west side uh, close to Stone Road that are also mm -hmm. not part of our HOA. So we're going to have to use, uh, you know, obviously communications uh, through the HOA uh, methods, but we're going to have to use some some other methods uh, since they're not on our lists, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for, yeah. for you guys putting this on. We, we definitely appreciate it. And uh, I, for one, like the plan. OK, perfect. Well, thank you. And um, like I said, if we have any other further questions or anything that pops up, during this point in time, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us or Mike um, to, uh, you know, we can try to answer the best to our ability. Um, and um, yeah, once we receive word, once Mike receives the word and he sends it to us, we will be glad to get the ballot phase started. And again, I, I just want to echo something that no, Nicole said. It's, it's, it's trying to use as, as many and all of the communications channels that you have available to you to, to inform the community of, of the plan, of, you know, the, the vote, you know, the importance of it that, you know, what the community is seeing in, in regards to reducing the speeds and enhancing the safety um, and just trying to get that word out so that people will respond. I, I, I will say now, granted, this was a project we worked on pre-pandemic and the voting was slightly different but we did have one that had about 900 homes in the in the ballot area and that community was successful and and i know a lot of that was due to the um, communication piece yes and um we will be making these slides available as well um, so if you are wanting um, a copy of these slides um, for reference, 
we will be glad to produce those. Right now, um, since we just changed platforms to Teams, we're having a little delay in getting the recording out. We're working on that um, as fast as possible. Um, so it might be a little delay to get the recording out, but the slides we can definitely provide. Thank you. Great. And then we have a um, a question or comment from uh, Kozen. Am I there? Yep. Yes. OK, I, I just noticed that you have 1100 ballots. We have a 807 homes in Newgate. Yeah, so the ballot area um, is widely chosen off of the road or the road structure that we're working with, not necessarily the amount of devices. Um, so the ballot area, um, when we look at the, I'm, I'm sorry, you said Newgate? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. When we're looking at the area, we ha do have to conclude all the townhomes. Um, but as far as like apartment areas and stuff like that, they just get one vote since it's only one property owner. Um, so we don't do multiple apartments since they're not owners. Um, so we do it based off of that. Well, our, sure. our yeah, again, we have 807 homes, not 1100. Right. So yes. I, I think that it's that, you know, the, the ballot area also um, takes into account some of the homes outside the Newgate HOA, because again, Newton Patent serves, you know, um, those other um, homes that are outside of the Newgate HOA. And so they also are included um, in this. And, and I know, like, for example, you know, we have, um, you know, to, to have a device placed on a roadway, the adjacent um, property owner has to sign a form. And so um, even though we've been primarily working with the Newgate HOA since they initiated this process, but they had to do an outreach to one of the other HOAs because the the proposed device abuts their HOA property. So again, it, it's because the roadways that were requested also do encompass other um, HOAs outside of Newgate. That's why the ballot area is larger than just the Newgate HOA and that they are all included as, as part of this process as well. So when we go to get people to sign on, um, who do we do? Do we go to Heritage Crossing? Do we go to the apartments and get those folks to sign off? Who are the 1100 ballots? So, the, I mean, currently on the screen, I'm, I'm sorry, are you calling or are you on I, the computer? No, I'm on the computer. Okay, so so you, you see the, in, so on the screen is the ballot area. So you, in all in that orange is, those are all the um, right. re residences that will vote. And so the task force, um, and I know that they've done this to some extent, I, I can't speak to all of it, is that I know that they have done some outreach to some of the other HOAs, and that will be a part that they'll have to do as part of the balloting phase as well. Okay, I see. It's and, everything that comes up to Stone Road. Yeah, and all also right. um, when we produce um, the ballot material for the task force, we provide addresses to all the homes and um, areas that you see that are in that orange in okay. the ballot area. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So I see one hand up and I also see a, a, a something in the chat. So, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, my mic was muted. No, that's um, <laughs> yeah, so so from from Elizabeth um, in, in the chat, it says, uh, can the ballots be mailed? I didn't catch any mention of this. Otherwise, I'm hearing that I need to. Oh, that they need to be hand delivered. Oh, yes, yeah. so, so they can be mailed. Um, they can and or be hand delivered. Um, so you you can mail them as like a mass meal or you can hand deliver them. It's, it's essentially up to the task force. And then we have a question from John. Uh, OK, John, you should be able to unmute yourself. 
Thank you. Um, and also as one of the ones who is outside of the HOA on Rocky Run Drive, uh, I appreciate being included in, in, in this and to put people's mind at ease. Yes, we were meet, we were mailed uh, the information about tonight's meeting. So, uh, so two questions actually to piggyback on what was just asked. For those of us who aren't in an HOA, um, will the, would that information be mailed to us? Yes. Yes. Um, so like I said once before, um, this ballot map isn't created based off of HOAs. It's based off of homes and addresses within mm -hmm. that ballot area. Um, so it, when the task force decides to move forward, um, all the homes, um, we will provide addresses and they will receive that kind of information. They will receive the ballot along with other ballot material um, with a, a, a plan of the map or the map that I showed previously with the plan, um, a cover sheet and the ballot as well. Okay, thank you very much um, no on, on that. Uh, the question that I uh, that, 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 that I bring though um, is that uh, living on Rocky Run Drive. Uh, for, first, I appreciate uh, the effort, and definitely anything to get the speed down on Aubrey Patton would, would be great. Um, has any consideration been given to increased enforcement of the four-way stop at Rocky Run and Aubrey Patton because the number of, I mean, I can I can I can tolerate rolling uh, rolling stops. But the number of air, the num sorry, the number of um, cars that I see just driving through it uh, is unnerving. And so again, I'm I'm just going to kind of repeat what Nicole said, but then also echo what I had previously said. Is one, I mean, you can always contact the the um, police non-emergency number and request enforcement. Um, but you can always um, send it, send the request to our office, and that we would contact the commander and assistant commander of the Sully District Police Station and ask them to assign an, it to an officer for enforcement. Okay, thank you. I was a little late to the meeting, so I did not catch that earlier. No, my apologies. Apologies. Quite, quite, quite all right. Thank you. And and the, the meeting is being recorded so that we can send it out later and you can review the, the whole process as well, or the whole meeting, my mistake. Um, Excellent, thank so, you very much. So I do have a... Uh, question from Keith. Uh, so if we were to eliminate the first device off of Stone Road, we would only need Newgate residents? Um, so once again, uh, the ballot area is based off the design of the road, not necessarily the uh, amount of devices or where the devices are placed. Um, so, I um, mean, we could possibly look at this again. Um, I would have to talk with my supervisor, Steve, um, to see if we can actually reconsider it. Um, but as once again, we do look at off base off of the whole road instead of the amount of devices or where they are placed. All right. So I'll go ahead and give it another another few minutes to see if anyone has any last minute comments and questions. Uh, Eric has a question. Would we still have heritage and the apartments? Yes, because I mean, because they're both along Newton patent and so. Yes, they would still be included in the um, and yes, it is a statement, Eric, and, and so but to answer, yes, you are correct. Mm -hmm. Eric has his hand raised. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, I would just like to point out, um, you know, even if we were to eliminate uh, one of those devices there, the one close to Stone Road, we, we would still have folks technically outside of uh, Newgate, since that's the bulk of it. But I think that device is actually very important. Uh, people seem to think that the, the speed limit goes up in that area because you have this wider, longer stretch going up to Stone Road. And we definitely see, especially coming down Stone Lo from Stone Road to the stop sign, uh, that's kind of a downhill and people tend to pick up a lot of speed there. Um, and uh, I really think that that device there would be super helpful. Uh, so just throw my two cents in there. Thanks. Okay, thank you.
Okay, so far I've heard nothing. I'll go ahead and give it another 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I don't see anyone on the keyboard so far. I don't see any hands raised. Um, I think we're good to close it out. Okay, I'll give it a couple more minutes just in case people are typing. But um, just as, as you guys know, and we have mentioned before, here's our contact information. Feel free to reach out if you have any further questions um, about tonight's um, presentation and or the whole project um, in total. Um, feel free to reach, reach, um, reach out to us at any time. Um, and if the task force feels comfortable and ready to go with the project as is or the plan as is, um, please reach out to Mike. Um, and we can start that process. Okay, thank you everyone. Thanks. And um, I'm not sure, Mike, do you have anything else to add? I was gonna say, I was about to say thank you and I see Elizabeth is, looks like she's typing. So okay. she's just saying she's just saying thank you as well. Okay. But anyway, I, I thank everyone for participating and we look forward to continuing to work with the task force and the community on on this traffic common endeavor. Yes, of course. OK, well, thank you, everyone, and you have a wonderful and safe evening and a wonderful holiday weekend. Thank you all.